Welcome back to my channel, I'm Satnam B. Today we're going to be looking at how to create a distressed Y2K inspired logo within Photoshop and Illustrator. Let's begin. Okay, so we're gonna first start off in Illustrator. The first thing we are going to do is type out our text. For this logo, I'm gonna just be using the word dirt Y2K as I'm gonna be stylizing it to create this sort of Y2K inspired logo, similar to something you'd see within Jet Set Radio or The World Ends With You. So for these kind of logos, you want to have a text that's really geometric and hyper stylized. There's a lot of fonts out there. Some are paid, some are free. So it's a good idea to just spend a little bit of time and find a font. With this font that I'm using, it is available on Adobe Fonts. It's called VDL. I mean, it does have some strange kerning between the letters. So I want to create a logo that's really compact as I'll be distressing the text and making the letter forms sort of blend together. So the idea is just using your cursor and using Alt and tabbing left and right to increase and decrease the spaces. The next thing we need to do is expand our text. And then from here, we just need to go to Object, Path and Offset Path. And here we were able to offset our paths to create this extremely bubbled edge. Just delete any excess points that are created. And then we're going to ungroup them and set them to be a stroke. So as you can see, we've already got this really stylized, almost like sticker-like logo. So as you can see, the stroke on the outside is an independent path. So with a lot of these Y2K logos, they have multiple elements that build them up. So it's typically like weird boxes, stars, flowers, and curving crescent moons. So for this, we're gonna just sort of stylize a few little elements just to see how they look. So for this one, we're just gonna add a quick little box at the bottom, and then we're gonna duplicate it a few times. So it'll probably look better if we flip it. So as you can see, the harsh corners don't really work so well for this kind of design. So we need to actually round the corners. Our next step is to create a stroked ellipse. So this will kind of act like a containing element. So you see a lot of these uh, shapes being used within like old school VHS type boxes and artwork. So from here, once you're happy with the rough idea, you want to um, again, expand the path. So select on it, go to object and expand. This will allow us to select it and then offset again. Here we're gonna create a stroke, which will be the same thickness as our text stroke. So where we currently are working with um, different strokes, you might find that having fills on some of the elements will make it easier to see. So we just need to ungroup this and we're gonna delete the middle line. So as you can see, it's already started to come together a little bit better. The next thing is adding some star elements. So if you draw a star with the polygon tool and then use the arrow keys, you can increase or decrease the amount of points on this star. The default star is a little bit too like fat for me to use as a, one of these stylized elements. So I'm gonna select the points and scale them down. I'm only scaling the internal points as I want this sort of sharp aesthetic. So even with this, it still looks a bit too um, rounded. So we need to just extend the scaling a little bit more. So now we've got something more to where I was aiming for. So again, with these Y2K logos, there's a, it's all about playing and experimenting with the way you want your logo to look. When you're working on something a bit more, something that you're gonna try and use for maybe like a t-shirt or um, stickers, it'd probably be best to try out a few different ideas first before you start to play with effects. So with that stroke, it's still looking a bit too big. So we're gonna condense that a little bit and maybe centralize it a bit more. The idea with these sort of uh, Y2K inspired logos is to really just try and find varying elements that you want to use and try to make your logo come up as unique as possible. With a lot of the time, Y2K logos do have um, an issue with legibility. So depending on your focus, if it's something that's a one-off print, something that's meant to be destroyed and distorted, then legibility isn't probably your most important call. Whereas if it's something that's gonna be used more frequently, such as a logo for like actual company or like a sports brand or something like that, then your best option would be to use typefaces that are more legible, but still have the, the techno inspired aesthetic. So again, with this one, we're just gonna add a slightly different perspective on this um, star. Um, I don't think the corner stars were working out so well. So what I've done is decided to choose 
a central focus point, which will be the star. That will be, again, with the same offset, just so that we can have the consistency within the logo. And then again, we're just going to copy that stroke. So where there are multiple elements, you will have to play with the arrangement. Some things will be in front of others and some things need to be pushed back. So the initial idea was to create more of a central focus uh, with the star, but I think having it cover the word dirt looks better as you can sort of enunciate the dirt Y2K as opposed to dirty 2K. So as we use different fills, you can see there are some bits of white that could be fixed. So the easiest option is to expand it and then use the shape builder tool and remove elements. This is probably like a final step as you will lose the ability to manipulate strokes and the placement of different elements. So once you're happy with the logo, we're going to open up Photoshop and we're going to create the distressed effect. So if you're working with Illustrator, you just want to copy that over or you can import it in whichever way. For this, I'm just going to copy and paste and paste it in as a smart vector object. The way I work, I try to work non-destructively. So the first thing I do is duplicate my layer. And then from here, we're going to be adding a Gaussian blur. Uh, we want to go for something that will blur the edges, but not too crazy that it's completely illegible. Something like this works to point around the five mark for my logo. The next thing we're going to be doing is adding in a threshold. This basically creates extreme separations between white and black values, and it begins to create this sort of ink bleed effect. So you can play with a slider and see um, how it looks. If elements bleed too much together, you can get a paintbrush and choose something with a soft uh, hardness and then begin to paint out on the mask. So with a lot of these distress types, um, you kind of want to play with the points where, where different lines intercept as those points will trap more ink. So the first option you could choose is to use uh, Crystallize, uh, which creates this sort of really janky approach. My approach is to instead use a ripple as it creates more of a softer, gradual, repetitive style of edge roughness. So as you can see, it barely does anything. So you can duplicate the effect a few times just to see how it works. Um, I just use Control Alt F to duplicate it before actually confirming it with the slider on the uh, one effect. This is just more of a, a old habit rather than something that needs to be done. Once you're happy with the effect, we're going to then just condense the effects and we're going to be adding a displacement. So displacement layers are essentially a black and white PSB Photoshop file, which offer Photoshop data that can begin to move values within your image around. So for instance, with this, I've got two different styles. One's more of a plastic film and the other one's more of a screen film. Okay, well the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add in some background texture basically. So we're gonna get some paper style texture and begin to drop that into somewhere where we like the position. Um, if you bring it in below your graphics, it will take the threshold. So you need to make sure it's above the threshold. So as you can see, if we have it on, we can't really see. So the first option we need to do is duplicate it, invert the original and set it to uh, multiply or darken. This will allow us to see the asset on top. We still want that same sort of dirt texture to be seen on the actual logo itself. So we will need to get the original version and set that to a screen effect. So as you can see, there's some dirt marks still translated over. So now selecting on the logo, we need to click displace. We need to go to effects and click displace. So as you can see, it already really messes it up. So depending on how your displacement map looks, you can create some really interesting results. So for this, I'm gonna use the more subtle approach as it creates a photocopy machine aesthetic. Because I've used the white strokes within Illustrator, the white comes through, but if you were to use a completely black PNG or vector, it will come out exactly just as a solid color. So there's a few ways to actually color it. So if you try and color the actual image itself using a fill effect, it won't work because you're using a threshold. So there is one option, which is use the color range tool, selecting the black areas and then adding a new layer and then selecting a color and then playing with the blending modes. This can work in some circumstances. However, it will create weird lines and weird color changes between the black and white filter. So as you can see, there's like these weird gray areas that are coming through. So as you can see, as we've distorted a bit more, uh, we've got these kind of um, more lines that need to be fixed. So if we click back onto the image itself, we need to just mask out 
those additional points which have been hit with too much uh, ink bleeding. The next style that you could use to change the color is to use a gradient map. This is great for adding like specific color choices. However, you can get some less than desired effects where colors begin to bleed into the background and things get really messy. So it's an idea to play with, but it depends on the visual style you're trying to go with. This can be used to create some cool styles. Like for instance, this one, which has got like this sort of yellow dirt on top of the actual logo, but the background itself is quite dark. So again, you can just delete things and move things around, add some new colors and see what really works for your design. So if we get rid of that. Lastly, we could use a full layer set to hard light. This blending mode allows you to create one color overall and it sits on top of the black elements of the logo. So you can choose what colors work. So if you've made it this far, hopefully you figured out how to make a Y2K distressed logo. If you did enjoy this episode, let me know if you would like a series based on Y2K inspired graphics. I could show how to animate some, how to do some in 3D. Just let me know in the comments. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe for more future content. Thanks.